What if you could make one simple change to your diet and have the potential to throw away medications for blood pressure for the rest of your life? I kid you not that is possible and I'm going to show you how it's done. You're going to make one simple change to your diet and you're going to dramatically reduce your blood pressure, your risk of having to take blood pressure medications and all of the problems that come from a lifelong history of hypertension. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Dr. Dave Clayton and I drop a new video every week teaching you how to use fitness and nutrition to measurably improve your health. So let's get started and talk about what is this one change to your diet that has such a powerful impact on your health with the potential to throw away medications. And that's reducing the amount of sodium in your diet. Now you may have heard about how sodium is related to high blood pressure and you may have heard that it's a little controversial and you know maybe you tried reducing salt and it didn't matter or it didn't have a big difference. I'm going to show you some of the science behind it. I'm going to show you what you really need to do to leverage this information about sodium, really put it to use and have a dramatic impact on your blood pressure. And then I'm going to show you some data, not only clinical research, but some of my own research, some of my own patient uh, experiences showing you how possible this is. All right, so let's get started and let's take a look at what is the science of sodium and why does it matter so much for blood pressure? Well, you can't talk about sodium in the context of blood pressure without talking about potassium. Sodium and potassium are two of the most important electrolytes in the human body. You see, what we do is we take all the sodium and we keep it outside the cells in our blood and in the fluid between our cells. And then we take all the potassium and we stick it inside the cells. So there's very little potassium outside of our cells, very little sodium inside of our cells. And what that does is it creates a gradient with a lot of pent up energy across that cell membrane. And we use that to send nerve signals, to contract muscles. We use it for all sorts of important processes in the body. It's one of the most important chemical engines that makes our bodies function as incredibly as they do. So, when you look at your blood panel, what you see is that there's a lot more sodium in the blood than there is potassium. And let's take a look at this. So the normal amount of sodium in your blood, and you can check your latest blood test for this, is about 140. That's a normal level of sodium. And if we drift too far or too low, it doesn't take much, maybe 10, 15 percentage points before you start to see really dramatic problems coma, seizures, death. I mean, you know, if you go too high or too low on the sodium, it's fatal. Um, and if we look at potassium, because I said that um, there's not much potassium in our blood, it's all in the cells, rather than that 140 that we saw for sodium, what you see is a much lower number. It's around four. So the normal potassium is right around four. And again, if we shift it too far in either direction, we die. So there's really serious uh, complications, including death that occur if our sodium and potassium drift even 10, 15, 20 points from, or percentage points from the norm. So our body tightly regulates this. Now, where does all this sodium and potassium come from? Well, of course, it's gotta come from the food we eat, right? Where else is it gonna come from? And regardless of how much sodium or potassium we intake, our kidneys are the primary way that we excrete it. So we are always excreting sodium and potassium in our urine, and it's our job of the kidneys to keep up with what's going in to make sure we keep that really tight balance. Remember, if we don't keep the right ratios, a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium to potassium in our bodies, we die. Super important to our survival. And over the two and a half million years or so that we were evolving on an all natural hunter gatherer diet, our bodies were getting about 10 times more potassium than sodium. So the average caveman got about five to 700 milligrams of sodium and about 10,000 milligrams of potassium. So our kidneys evolved this really efficient way of holding onto sodium and getting rid of the potassium. It was necessary for our survival. Remember, we're getting a lot more potassium than sodium, so sodium was scarce. We learned how to hold on to it. Now, our kidneys never evolved for a high sodium diet and they never evolved for a low, low potassium diet. Now, potassium is just as important as sodium, but I wanna really focus on sodium in this video, so I'm gonna drop another video next week talking about potassium, so stay tuned for that one. It's gonna be a good one. You need to know about both. 
But if we just look at the way sodium acts on the kidneys, what we see is that our kidneys also regulate blood pressure. And the way they do that is by taking note of how much sodium and water is in our blood, looking at the pressure, and then it triggers the release of hormones like renin and aldosterone and angiotensin. And these cause us to retain sodium and water and elevate our blood pressure. Remember that if your blood pressure was low, is low, then that can be fatal too, right? You need enough pressure to keep the blood pumping to your uh, brain and your organs. So, Low blood pressure is one of the main things that the kidney uh, is there to prevent. And I'm gonna show you later that high blood pressure was never really a problem before we started introducing salt to our diet. So what happens when we change the ratio of sodium to potassium, when we get way too much sodium in our diet, what happens is we artificially set that, we uh, artificially change that set point of the kidneys and we get all of this uh, angiotensin and renin and aldosterone that are abnormal for the amount of blood pressure that we've got. And we start setting that point higher and higher and higher. And if we compare a normal diet for even a healthy eater, then what we see is that in the United States, we are getting, we're getting about 3.8 grams of sodium per day and we're getting about 2,000 milligrams of potassium. And that 3.8 grams of sodium that we get a day is a lot more than the five to 700 milligrams our kidneys were designed for. And when we increase that level of sodium in our diet to these levels, we screw up the kidney's ability to regulate. And in fact, here's something really crazy, is that if you look here, I've put all these blood pressure medications on this page, I mean, dozens of them, and what you see is that they all act on the kidney, either to actually filter out excess sodium or to start blocking this pathway that is there for our survival, this renin, angiotensin, aldosterone pathway. It's just blocking those hormones, right? So those are there for our survival, but because of the excess sodium, we've got abnormal levels and they're artificially raising our blood pressure and all these drugs block it, but you can think about all these drugs as just being there because of the high sodium in our diets. And you know, this is something that really hit home for me because in my late 30s, I developed high blood pressure and I was eating super healthy. I'm gonna show you a quick look at kind of how I used to eat then and how I eat now. But suffice to say that even though I was a doctor and even though I was trying to eat healthy, even though I was in great shape, before I hit the age of 40, I had high blood pressure. And it's because I didn't know this stuff that I'm teaching you here. So let's start looking at what happens if we take the sodium out of the diet. And this is a really interesting graph. I know it's hard to probably make out the detail, but what you need to know is that across the X axis, as we go to the right, what you see is the amount of sodium increasing when you look at population data, right? So these are communities with more and more and more sodium in the diet. And then on the Y axis, what you see is what percent of the population has high blood pressure. And you can see just at a glance that the curve slopes very neatly up and to the right. The more sodium is in your diet, the higher your blood pressure. And what's really interesting is when you look at communities where they don't have sodium in the diet, where you only have access to all natural foods and we're not introducing salt into the diet, that very few people, if any, develop hypertension as they age. So this is really a problem that is endemic to modern societies with access, with access to excess salt. Um, but if you take away that excess salt, the blood pressure comes down pretty significantly. So let's look at some other data on the impact of a low salt diet. So if we were to say, skip the medications and just reduce the amount of salt, what you see is that across multiple clinical trials, you see pretty significant reductions in blood pressure, anywhere from five to 10 points or so. And this is pretty significant, but this is the average. So these are averages across clinical trials. And when you look at the outliers, right, the people who are above average, you know, remember these are averages. So half the people had above average, right? So when you look at what the, what's attainable with a low sodium diet, these numbers are really high, 10, 15, even 30 points of blood pressure reduction just by getting rid of the sodium. 
And this is about what I saw when I started really changing my sodium potassium balance was I started to see these 10, 20, 30 point reductions. And all you have to do is just stay disciplined about what you're doing and you'll see these results. Remember five to 10 points is an average. I mean, that's something that could be expected for the average person on a low sodium diet. Um, and if we compare this to the amount of blood pressure reduction we get from medications, what we see is that a low to medium dose of one of the most common medications out there, uh, lisinopril compared to another uh, Valsartan, what we see is that the blood pressure reduction for a low dose or a medium dose is only about five or six milligrams of, or millimeters of mercury. So that's five to six points. That is less than what you would be getting from reducing sodium. So you can see by now the huge importance of this and why it matters, right? We're triggering our kidneys to um, secrete excess hormones. We're artificially elevating our set point for what is a normal blood pressure. And there's ample statistical evidence showing that if you make this change, if you get rid of the sodium, then everything starts to reverse pretty nicely. Now let's talk about how you're gonna reduce the amount of sodium in your diet. Now, it's interesting to see that out of the 3.8 grams of sodium that most of us get in a day, about 75% of it comes from the food or is put into our food before we touch it. So only about 10 to 15% is what you're putting in with a salt shaker or adding some, some salt to your cooking. Um, about 10% is inherent in foods. That's the 500, 700 milligrams that we were talking about. But then most of it is somebody put it in there. It's in your ketchup, in your hot sauce, in your mustard, it's in your takeout food, it's in your processed foods, it's in a TV dinner. It's in all these foods that are convenient and they're easy to grab. And what's happening is they're putting a lot of sodium in there. Why? Because we like the taste and it's a great preservative. So a lot of good reasons why if you're trying to sell food, you wanna put sodium in there, but if you don't wanna take a lot of medications, this is not something you wanna be doing, is going for the convenient, easy foods that are full of sodium. And if we look at a kind of a day in the life of a healthy eater, I like this slide because it's kind of the way I used to eat before I really started focusing on what was important for my blood pressure. Again, I was worried about calories and um, carbs and I was worried about my waistline, but I wasn't really focused on my blood pressure. and I didn't see the importance of the sodium potassium balance. So, you know, a typical day I'd have maybe a turkey, egg, bacon sandwich, um, you know, on an English muffin. Then I'd have a turkey sandwich for lunch and, you know, a protein bar, and then maybe some whole wheat spaghetti with some low fat meat sauce and maybe finish it off with some cookies for dessert. And I thought that was a pretty healthy diet. I mean, it was pretty low cal, uh, you know, I was staying pretty active, but I was getting pretty close to that national average of 3.6, 3.8 grams of sodium per day, even though uh, I was trying to eat healthy. And then if we switch over and we take a look at the way I eat now, what I did was I got rid of the prepackaged tomato sauce. I got rid of the deli meats. I got rid of the bread. I got rid of the bacon, the cheese. A lot of these foods that are super high in sodium. And now I'll make some eggs with vegetables and berries for breakfast. I'll have some nuts or fruit for a snack. And then I have meat and vegetables for lunch, uh, more fruit and vegetables during the day for snacks and dessert. And then uh, for dinner again, you know, a nice serving of fish or meat with some vegetables. And when you add all this up, what you see is that I'm getting less than a thousand milligrams of sodium in a day. And I'm eating well, it's not that big of a shift, but I've dropped my sodium down pretty dramatically. And you can also see that the potassium levels have gone up significantly. So a huge shift in the sodium to potassium ratio and that has incredibly powerful impact on your blood pressure. So I just wanted to finish by showing you a couple of these slides here. Um, so this is one of my patients who, uh, again, went on a low sodium, high potassium diet. And you can see the blood pressure comes down really nicely, um, about 15 points or so, and we're dropping a blood pressure medication. So nice movement there. And then another one, same thing, where we see a nice steady decline. Again, about 15 points of blood pressure reduction. 
and, uh, and this happens in a matter of a few months. And most of the research shows that you can expect to start seeing changes in your blood pressure within weeks to months of starting. So this can happen really quick. It just matters how aggressively you, you get on uh, making these shifts. So the key takeaways here is we're going to try and cut salt out of the diet as much as we can. So we're going to limit the amount of salt that we apply with our table uh, salt. We're going to limit our use of condiments. Um, if we go out to a restaurant, we want to make sure we go somewhere where they make the food fresh and say, hey, please, can you not put any salt? If you're going to use a sauce, put it on the side. I'm going to use that sparingly. Get rid of the packaged goods. Um, and this is the TV dinners. Anything with sodium added to it before you got it. Um, stick to fresh foods for the most part. Um, and then try and avoid the baked goods because uh, baking soda, baking powder, salt, they find their way into a lot of baked goods. And if you look at like kind of a normal dinner roll, it's got a ton of sodium in it. Bake, or baked bread, like a loaf of bread, ton of sodium in it. And even if you only see that, you know, a, a piece of bread has, a slice of bread has only about 100 milligrams of sodium, remember you're gonna have two slices on that sandwich. There's 200. That's a third of what our hunter-gatherers got. And you know we didn't really deliver any nutritional value there. So it doesn't really come at a good cost. So what you wanna do is just stay focused on this, keep an eye on your blood pressure, track it. Um, if you're already doing this, leave a comment below. Love to hear how you're doing. If you have questions about sodium and potassium, drop a comment, love to hear from you. Happy to answer questions. Uh, keep in mind, this is all for um, education and entertainment. This is not medical advice. If you have high blood pressure, talk to your doctor before you make any change to your medications. Um, and thanks for watching. Stay tuned and love to see you in the next video.